Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGuardGuard.com and in this video we will look at how to create dependent combo boxes for your user forms in Excel VBA. So on screen at the moment, couple of simple combo boxes on a user form. And in the first combo box, I can select a country such as New Zealand and I would like the second combo box to show me a list of cities in New Zealand or whichever country I selected. So in the background you can see that I have set up a list of countries and a list of the cities for each of those countries. And I want it to pick the right cities. So let's have a look at what we have. So here is my Visual Basic Editor, which you can access through the Developer tab Visual Basic. Um, and I have my two combo boxes on here. First combo box is called CBO Country. Second combo box is called CBO City, just to get us up to speed quickly there. Now also on this sheet already, I have created named ranges. So similar to the video I did on dependent data validation lists on a worksheet, but now it's combo boxes on a user form, but I want to use these named ranges again. They're the simplest way of referring to these ranges. So if I highlight this range of countries, it's called countries. Highlight the range of German cities, it's called Germany. Italian cities, called Italy. And I think you get the idea. New Zealand has to have an underscore in because of the space. Otherwise, they're simply named as you would expect them to be. Now, in the Visual Basic Editor, let me double click on the combo box for country so that it immediately initializes this uh, CBO country change event. So any code I put in here will be triggered on the change of the country dropdown. And that's what I want. When they change the country dropdown, provide the correct options for the city dropdown that comes next. Now I'm going to use a select case structure for this. The select case of CBO country dot value. That is the case I'm testing. What value did the user select in the combo box for country? Let me put in n select. If anyone's not familiar with n select, sorry, not n select, reverse the select case structure. It's something you may wish to check out. It's a great alternative to writing long winded nested ifs. You can also learn about it in our Excel VBA course, of which there'll be a link in the description of this video for. So select case CBO country dot value. Case is equal to, and then we basically go through the countries. So it doesn't really matter what one I choose first, but let's put Germany so it's in alphabetical order. I can see the list of sheets just in the background here now, which is quite helpful. So if the case is Germany, what do we do? The CBO city, the name of the other combo box, dot row source will be equal to that named range, which is simply Germany. Okay, here we go. And then we can really just copy that and repeat it for all of the other options that we've got. So there are different ways of doing this, you know, this testing. If I'm testing for the value, if I'm using nested ifs, you know, and, and other structures that are available to me. I'm just trying to pick the probably the simplest way for now. See so if I just race through these quickly and have Italy would be Italy and Netherlands would be Netherlands and who's next? New Zealand would be New Zealand underscore in here. 
and then we've got Russia which will be Russia and I underestimated we need a couple more in here let me just copy these two and put these in for Spain and UK Spain and UK and we'll be testing this out on screen just give me two seconds and let's see at the moment if this works so easiest way of testing this I guess is to jump back to the user form for double click on FRM drop downs and then if I select my user form and use the run sub user form button at the top and if I select a country like Russia it's complaining lack of variable not defined what is it I have not done it is the inverted commas around the countries in the row source now you may have seen that coming it's you know my video I did on the dependent data validation lists we were using the indirect function in order to you know uh, convert text to a reference uh, here we will write it in as a string which you do not do when you're using named ranges in formulas you don't have to do this so I wanted to see it here that had it complained with an error called variable not defined that has partly been triggered because of my option explicit at the top uh, I'll repeat again if some of this is a bit unclear if you don't know what option explicit is please check out my Excel VBA course you learn all about it in there but for now if I press my reset button come out of that break mode let's test it again let's select a country let's go for Spain and now I have a list of cities from Spain or if I change that to Germany a list of German cities let's do one more Netherlands list of cities in the Netherlands so that combo box is working it is dependent on the first combo box whatever is selected specifies the options for the next one and it is possibly you know there's always controversy around these people have their opinions but possibly the easiest way of doing it uh, if I just open up that code one more time a select case statement didn't take too much time a bit of copying and pasting a bit of you know double checking what you type and I'm just matching you know the the selection from that list and using their named ranges so you know which always set up in advance once again doesn't take that long unless you've got loads and loads of lists and then maybe you want a macro or something to do that quickly uh, but otherwise it's the simplest way of referencing these things within within code and that is how you can create dependent combo boxes for your user forms in Excel VBA I hope you found this video useful please check out some of our other uh, videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergargar.com.